Now on to education matters. As they start the school semester, California students are surely feeling the impact from statewide budget cuts. Well, one local elementary school is able to provide classes that are probably gone from most schools. And it's thanks to a nonprofit that raises funds exclusively for them. Reporter Margaret Sharp explains. In a time when most places are firing, this school is actually hiring. This year we were able to raise enough money so that the principal, Mrs. Marks, um, using some other funds too she had from the state, was able to hire three part-time credential teachers. And it's partly thanks to the Education Eagle Alliance. Teachers, parents, and members of the Torrance community created the nonprofit to raise money for students with different needs. Some will get extra tutoring, others will get ESL help. And gifted students like Matthew will learn more than what's in the standard curriculum. I like learning about like all those planets and like uh, all those things like way, way out there. The new teachers will either assist in class or take some students into a more focused learning environment. We've done pre-testing of the students and post-testing of them, and the teachers already can see the differences in the classrooms, the way the students can attack their um, daily work and their homework. Mark says that one of the benefits of having extra teaching staff is how it helps students who might normally be frustrated with their workload. Children don't come home in tears because they don't understand because they have tutoring all day long on the areas that they needed. And thanks to the additional funds raised by the Alliance, students can add specialized classes to their agenda. They've been doing debate. They're going into aeronautics right now. Um, they're going to go to the Museum of Flight. We're doing this project right now on early airplanes. We get to learn about airplanes from like a long, long time ago. The program fills gaps that need to be filled and gives students a chance to get more than the state budget can give. And although the Alliance only started fundraising in 2009, they've already raised nearly $30,000. I like it well because like we do a lot of stuff that we don't really get to do in a regular class. One dollar at a time, the Eagle Education Alliance is helping the students at ANZA. For City Cable 3, I'm Margaret Sharp. Nowadays, getting kids to enjoy a quiet moment with the book may seem impossible. Well, a local elementary school did just that, and they also learned that an unlikely celebrity shared their love of reading. Reporter Alexis Sita has the story. And boys and girls, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our Clipper player who's come all the way to Torrance, California to see the awesome Hickory Hounds, Marcus Camby. <laughs> An unusually big presence was felt at Hickory Elementary School recently. Is he tall or what? But Marcus Camby wasn't there to show off his basketball skills. How you guys doing today? Good. Good. How was school today? Good. How many are you ready to go home? Me. <laughs> well, you can't go home just yet. We're going to do a little reading for you guys today, okay? If that's all right? The L.A. Clipper was there to promote education by showing off his favorite hobby. I love to read. So read he did, along with the help of some new teammates. The morning sun was warm and bright, but the neighborhood seemed cold and dark. The book No Bad News tells the story of a young boy who sees only the worst in the inner city where he lives. But the boy soon discovers the riches of his neighborhood and starts to spread good news instead. Before long, he saw more good news. Mr. Alexander and his son were fixing a bike. Hey, Marcus, could you give us a hand, ex Mr. Alexander? Sure thing, Marcus replied. Noises filled the air, but now all Marcus heard were birds singing, children playing, and people laughing. The audience listened to another book with rapt attention, and hearing and seeing a big man share such an intimate story kept this usually rowdy crowd quite composed. Afterwards, the students held their own version of a post-game press conference and asked some important questions. Yes. How tall are you? How tall am I? <laughs> Seven feet tall. <laughs> He asked, <laughs> do I have a lot of money? Do I get a lot of money? Uh, uh, next question. <laughs> and when asked what Camby wanted to be when he grew up, some kids and adults may have been surprised to hear this response. 
Growing up as a kid, uh, my dreams and aspirations wasn't always to be in an NBA. I really wanted to be an elementary school principal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went to school for education, got an education major, and um, I enjoy giving back to the community. I enjoy giving back to the younger generations, and I like coming to these schools and talking to these kids and let them know about my upbringing and let them know what I've been through, but also to express the importance of education. So the moral of the story may just be that reading can be a pathway to unexpected places, maybe even places like the NBA. You may see things one way, but it doesn't always have to be that way. If you push yourself on the right path, you can further and better yourself as a person. The end. For City Cable 3, I'm Alexa Sita. And finally, 60 years ago, one of the city's first housing tracks was transformed from swampland to a thriving community. That community includes a school that holds fond memories for so many of its graduates. And some of those graduates return to help celebrate a big anniversary. Reporter Margaret Sharp takes us there. My husband, late husband Ben, uh, founded, developed this area. And uh, he's uh, always told me that his pride was that he made the unuseful land into useful. That useful land is the area known as Seaside. What used to be a swamp was transformed into housing tracks and Seaside Elementary School. And this year, the community and school are celebrating their 60th anniversary. Some of my fondest childhood memories were right here at Seaside School. And the anniversary celebration was also a great excuse for former students to come back home. My mother still lives in the house where I grew up, so I've been, my family's been in this neighborhood for 50 years. That tradition of staying in the community has continued for many residents. I had a grandchild that went here, and I, my great-grandson will be starting kindergarten in uh, September. I think it's really reflective of all of Torrance. You know, we consider it a big city, but, you know, if you live here, it still really feels like a small city. That small town feel is part of so many idyllic childhood memories, some of which sound like something out of a movie. All the kids were playing in the street, and we would come home when the church bells rang, and uh, it was, I think, a time of innocence in a way. Although times have changed, houses have gotten bigger, and the population has grown, Seaside hasn't changed an inch. It hasn't changed much. The school looks the same. And uh, it's weird, actually, because where we had our eighth grade graduation hasn't changed except maybe a little bit of art showed up on the wall. For others, like Haggett, the pride she feels when she remembers her husband's love for the community won't change either. I listen to his story, and so I'm very, it's still Ben gives in me and Seaside. And that's going to do it for us on This Week in Torrance. We hope you got some valuable information from our look at the education, health, and safety issues that impact our community. And Jen and viewers at home, take a good look at this old set because it's not going to be with us the next time we come back live. That's right, Ben. We've been working on a new look for our show, and it's coming together behind the scenes. We'll be on hiatus for the next two weeks. Then we'll be bringing you This Week in Torrance from out in the field. And come this fall, we'll be back in the studio with a new set, a new look. Of course, the same quality reporting you've come to expect from us here at City Cable. And take it from me, I've been in this business a long, long time, and it's always exciting to be working on a new set. Until it's then, I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jin Chun. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.